Hello and welcome. This is Kelly Fitzpatrick with Redmonk here with a video on what is MongoDB Atlas Search, how to help users find what they need. With me today is Eric from MongoDB. Eric, would you mind saying a little bit about who you are and what you do? Hi there. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, my name is Eric Hatcher. I am a staff developer advocate at MongoDB, specifically on the Atlas Search uh, platform. And uh, my background has been for the last whole bunch of decades uh, been focused on search specifically things built uh, up and around apache lucene so that's been my expertise over the the years and i love that um not only do we have someone who is a search expert to talk about atlas search but you have like you have like a proper title like like staff yeah. developer advocate um i don't think we get i thought to downplay it because i don't really know like i don't feel like you know I've, I'm, I'm, i haven't even reached my year tenure i'm about to reach that so i'm very proud to be at mongodb it's a great company great people and so definitely proud of it but uh you know i'm not certainly not worthy <laughs> well <laughs> um well thank you for joining us today and um you know not mongodb um i have been following them for quite a while but for folks out there who don't know mongodb is probably best known for its document model database um document stores emerged quite a few years ago as part of this whole kind of like you no know, sql movement that, that kind of sought alternatives to relational databases um, if you are new to the document model and you want to learn more about it, we'll put some resources in the show notes. Atlas is MongoDB's kind of fully managed data platform. And one of the great things about data platforms is that as a developer, it can save you a lot of time having to stitch together different types of data stores. One of them, of course, being search, which is where Atlas search comes in. And Eric, I'm going to turn things over to you because you are like, 10x the expert on anything having to do with search than than I mean like 100x times the expert than me. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, and and thank you so much for that introduction. You you basically just covered my next two slides. So I have this slide here. It's kind of busy, but it is uh, it shows you the breadth of what MongoDB Atlas provides as far as a what we call a developer data platform just encompasses all the kinds of things that you need when you put your data in somewhere backups replication scalability graphql authentication you know rules and triggers and you know multi-cloud support all these kinds of things that are difficult for us as developers to really kind of think about when we're trying to build an application so um atlas takes a lot of that pain away from you as a developer and unifies it all into one kind of aggregation pipeline semantics, which we'll see as we talk about the search platform aspect of it. Yeah, and I, I know I covered a little bit of the slide, but like the visualization of it, I think is really, really great. Um, look at all the things that I don't want to have to worry about as a developer that are on this slide. And, 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 you know, frankly, I'm a search person. So I, you know, all of this stuff is, is, is awesome, but, you know, I focus on the search aspect of it, but I am thankful and, and that there is the whole thing there that makes the search like nice and easy and, and, and just, you know, scalable and all that kind of stuff, um, because of the whole Atlas platform. So there we go. So, uh, carry on, right. Mm. Um, so. As Kelly mentioned, also like the, the the main thrust of what's made MongoDB special over the years is what's called the document data model. And um, it's not just a, a physical thing. It's kind of a mindset thing as well, how you model your data as what we call documents, where all things related to a particular entity or a thing is co-located in this document structure often represented as what you see on the right here as a, just a json um, document structure with name value pairs um, compare that to the relational model where you turn things into different tables and have foreign keys and these types of things totally a reasonable way to do things and a reasonable way to represent things um, but mongodb atlas represents it as as this document data model which segues very nicely into search because what you feed the search engine itself are documents and documents like we saw on the previous slide here fit very nicely into a search engine because that's effectively what the search engine underneath of atlas search 
actually calls what you put into it is a document. So it, it is a very natural one to one kind of model there. So in terms of Atlas search, what you can do is turn enable Atlas search for your collection. And we'll see that in the next section on the how to. And what that will do is provide you a full text search engine on top of your data for whatever collection or collections that you opt in on this. Um, and it provides all of these kind of features you see here, everything that's full text search related. So the main ones to me are the rich query language, being able to filter and fast it, have fuzzy inexact search, but with uh, relevancy ranking going on in there. So the better matches to a particular query come to the top and uh, other supporting features such as multi-language support, um, highlighting. So the query terms you see get highlighted in the co in context of the document itself or the fields that are matching that particular query um, and so on. Synonyms, more like this similarity. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's the kind of the, the, the features that Atlas Search itself supports. So um, the way that Atlas Search does its thing is in contrast to how you may have built or tacked on a search engine to your data in the past um, where you are um, attaching a third-party search engine to your data. Um, what we do in Atlas Search is your data is in Atlas, so we uh, receive um, a synchronization um, notifications of your content as it changes, as you add new content, as you update content, we keep the search index in sync automatically within under a second in, in almost every case. Um, and, and so as you modify your data, your search index is staying in sync with your changes. Um, and again, it's all under one unified interface through the Atlas, the MongoDB query language interface where you specify an aggregation pipeline and go through a, uh, a search pipeline within that one interface that a developer speaks to. And I really like the term synchronization tax that you use on this slide, because um, I think it very much, it, you know, it just speaks to like what extra time or extra effort that is put into not only having to like learning um, you know, other technologies and that kind of bolt on search scenario, I think is a really good one because it's not just learning it and like setting it up and then like maintaining it and making making everything update when it needs to be. And, and interestingly, that as I was thinking about this presentation over the last couple of days and thinking about the document model, um, actually, one of the things that you do in the synchronization tax that you end up paying is turning your content wherever it may reside a relational database into documents. So you end up forming the document model to hand to the search engine anyway. So that is the synchronization tax that you end up paying is to documentify your domain <laughs> effectively, whatever you want back from the search, you know, index. So. I think the word documentify is something that get, is going <laughs> to get added into my dictionary as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, that's the first utterance of it. We'll see if it uh, exists elsewhere in the universe. Um, and underneath the covers of this whole thing is this thing called Apache Lucene. So the next slide is going to show the Atlas search architecture. This architecture, I'm not going to go into all the arrows that are, 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 are showing how a user makes a query and, and that happens and how content comes in and gets synchronized. All those things are processes that that you know we know as developers need to happen that's what atlas search is doing behind the scenes so um and at the heart and soul of what atlas search is is this pr very popular search engine library called lucene it comes from the apache software foundation um, it is apache software licensed um, it's embedded in all kinds of search engines um, that um, people have been using for for decades and We've put it inside of the Atlas and the Atlas search process here and, and speak to its API. So um, we benefit from all of the goodness of the relevancy ranking, the rich query language, um, and the indexing performance and the flexibility with multilingual and all that kind of stuff comes from this underlying Lucene library. 
And, you know, I, I didn't put my timer on, uh, you know, we had the kind of the seven minute thing and I was trying to make sure we did the right elevator pitch for this thing. And, and, you know, really, I just want to close in terms of the, the, the part of what is Atlas Search with, you know, Atlas Search is Lucene at the heart of it that brings to bear all of the goodness that Atlas, the developer data platform brings as well. So you get the reliability, um, the clustering, the scalability, um, you know, it's just really just a one click, turn it on for your particular collection type of thing. And um, it, there's a lot of customizability. If you want to fine tune how the search stuff works, that gets into kind of a lot of gory details of how full text and inverted indexes work. Um, but that's all kind of possible there, even though like one click easy path makes things very nice and, and, and powerful without, you know, giving a lot of thought to those things. Um, so again, Atlas Search benefits from Atlas, the platform, and Atlas Search provides immense searchability, findability for your content um, that you're putting into the Atlas platform. So thank you, Eric. That was like a great, I think, kind of like what is uh, MongoDB Atlas Search in the larger kind of context. Um, I believe it's time for a demo. And I know that like one of my questions is always like, what type of application is this suited for? And I know that you are going to actually, in the demo, kind of walk us through a bunch of kind of simple scenarios. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great, great point. And in fact, um, it is really as a as a search enthusiast, a search professional over the last bunch of years, um, one of the things that is necessary is to ground this stuff into reality. Like we can say we want full text search and um, all of this magical relevancy ranking, but really what does that mean in terms of the usability? What are we doing with it within our applications? And that is going to drive backwards towards the types of features and capabilities and configurations that we're going to turn on. So we, I like to think about application development, not from the bottom up of the configuration up to the application, but more from the application and the usability back down into let's configure the search engine for those needs. And that's yeah, like, what does the application have to do as opposed to like, let us just start with all of the things and see what we can build. And so in this particular case, and we'll just segue into the demo and, and you know, Kelly, you just, you know, feel free to um, let, drive our direction any which way you'd like here. But um, my can demo um, is to show you what you do with Atlas and, um, and, and in terms of turning on Atlas search, configuring it, um, and then building an application effectively uh, on, on top of the Atlas Search um, API effectively. And so the way we do this um, for um, easy demo ability and just to have kind of a common data set that many people kind of know and it's not going to change over time, even though, of course, new movies are going to come out, but we're going to use the movies data set. <laughs> Excuse me. And the reason that makes a lot of sense here is that we actually have the facility to load sample data sets into Atlas Search and Atlas very easily. And so when you click this load sample data set, I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that now. And it takes a, a couple of minutes, uh, if even that. And then it gives you all of these things that are called sample underscore here. These are all these different databases that come with the sample. It's not a lot of data, but it's kind of diverse. Um, and in this particular example, we're going to focus on movies. So I guess if we wanted to kind of, you know, have a, a faux but not, not unrealistic application here would be, you know, we're back to, you know, Blockbuster party in like 1999 and we are providing a movie search service, right? So, and and this kind of models the the kind of Netflix data, we call it the Mflix data set here. So there's a movie database, it's got right here 21,439 movies. So it's not every movie in existence and it actually, the data set cuts off in the 2010s somewhere. So it's not the current movies. So um, we definitely can do some searches that are going to end in some dead ends if we're thinking that we're going to get some some more recent movies because they're just not in this database. So, and just to clarify, these are sample sets that any any user trying out like Mongo Atlas or like MongoDB Atlas search can, can access. Um, so probably not good if you want to do anything with like a, a Barbenheimer kind of search. 
like cast search or anything like that. But some some slightly older movies would work out. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a limited set of movies. These are just going to be the popular movies from, and we'll see the range mm-hmm. of years actually as I show off the fasting feature of Atlas Search. So, um, g- through here, what we can do is say go to the search service over here, and then what it's going to do is drive us through some wizards here. I've already set up a search index for the movies collection here but what that would look like to set it up for a new one if you didn't have any there would be a big create search index button right in the middle of the screen Mm -hmm. Um, here we can create one we can say we're going to just use the visual editor and just use the the click 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 kind of real easy path here and we come down here and we pick the movies collection and we already have a default thing so we can say uh, new index and just use the defaults here and just click and just hit i don't even have to think about all these there are a lot of kind of settings up here that you know we are worthy of drilling into but it's beyond the scope of you know kind of a seven minute thing we just want to just click this Mm -hmm. and when we do that this little robot here goes behind the scenes and is uh setting up a chain stream listener and going through that process that was in that diagram that we just showed i'll just bounce back to that so we can have that while it's doing its thing it is doing the initial synchronization and a chain stream listener here and bouncing to the leucine index so it is indexing all of our movies um as it spins right here and it's probably done already Mm -hmm. and and you can see already just changed to initial sync so it's already kicked into process here and we can we can watch the status here so it sets up automatically for us and this is all available and I, i skipped over this as i jumped into the atlas ui here as a developer you can create a free atlas account and have access to atlas search in this manner and that will give you behind the scenes a primary and two secondaries um, for uh, uh, replicated index structure. So you actually have, you know, more search horsepower than, 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 than mere mortals know what to do with by um, just doing a few clicks like this. So this actually gives you a very, very powerful index behind the scenes here, just with a few clicks. Um, and to leverage that, and we'll just do that through the one that I've already created here, mm-hmm. you can click this query button here and do your queries for Keanu Reeves, if you want here, and, and hit the search button. And that will give you back um, you know, particular movies that he was in as uh, probably in the cast here. So here he is in the cast, right? So this is a basic search tester interface that's built into the atlas ui Um, it gives you the code behind the scenes if you click this right here you can copy and paste that code over into your application Um, or you can do some more sophisticated things like go over to uh, mongodb atlas which is um, a mongodb product that it provides in this case a mac uh, apple mac um, interface to MongoDB and to Atlas. So I've got this thing connected to my M10 instance and I'm doing um, searches through basically through code here and just playing around to see what the end results are here. So I'm doing a search for Cass Keanu Reeves in this case and I'm fastening across uh, various year buckets and across all genres and well, I want 10 of these back. I'm just kind of hot going over this code without going into gory detail of it because there is a you know a lot of kind of gory detail here but this is the uh the basic search stage is uh, is effectively this right here what you see and it provides back these 10 documents and it provides back facets so I can see across all the movies what how many movies Keanu Reeves acted in that were drama how many were action movies and so that's the data i get back now we need to turn that into an application so um i don't know if this is a good time um or if you have any questions kelly um i'll pause before i jump into the application side of things no and i um i think having the kind of search tester in the ui and then being able to kind of like start there and then you know pop out to your other your whatever tool works kind of best for you is like really kind of neat aspect of this. Um, so more and, of a comment than a question. Yep. 
Um, and uh, related, so uh, I couldn't have planned your questions better because actually that's a, a perfect question for what I, I, I had intended to show here. And that is this export to language. So I've developed as a, I'm just tinkering around and I've done this query here and seen the output. And now as a developer, I want to take this query and turn it into code. So I can come over here and export this to various languages and I'm coding in Java here. So I literally just do hit this copy button and I've done this twice with two different queries that I'm going to show you and gone over into my code editor and pasted the code that it gave me back literally right here and right here, two different queries. I could have done my code a little bit cleaner without duplication, but I just copy and pasted a couple of times. And that's going to give me uh, this facet view that I'm going to show you in, in, in just a second. So um, let's just think through as a developer, we're going to uh, try out a few different queries. So this is just kind of like a graphical and a Java application way to show the a, a couple of different queries. So I've got the query red monk and I'm sending it to the aggregation pipeline in a couple of different ways and in, in, in like, I don't know, three, four different ways. Um, so we're going to send red monk as a query over and I've got this kind of silly animation here that you're going to see. And, and this is just how to kind of show you more graphically what happens when you do this query red monk using basically the, the kind of query that gets generated from the search tester. And this is what the results look like. So whether these are good or bad, it's really hard to say without kind of exploring, you know, what queries there are um, that are best for that. And I, I don't have the movie expertise to tell you that. And I'm, I'm definitely learning about movies with both Red and Monk in the title that I did not know about before. And, and, and so that's, again, you're, you're very good at the segue thing. So one thing that I do next is do the query Red or Monk in just the title. So you get to pick and choose. This last query goes across all fields and excuse the kind of the weird animation there. Um, the I'm doing across all fields in this particular case. And in the next case, I'm just doing it against the title. So really now we're doing red or monk in the title. So that changes, you know, the, the, at least the relevancy order of the results. And in this case, I'm changing this to be a phrase. So this means this needs to be red monk literally as a consecutive couple of terms in either the title, cast, or plot fields. So that's what this particular query is doing. And as you can see, there were no documents found in that particular case. Um, so, and sorry, this was a bad segue for me, was this is what we call facets. So facets are the ability to bucketize, and I, I think that probably is a word that's been out there, bucketize. Um, is to bucketize the the documents into groups. And in this case, I'm doing it against two different fields. I'm doing it against the year field that the movie was released. And I'm doing it against the genre field. I actually don't show that it says genre or, or year, but that's what it is. So this is against all 21,349 movies 48 of them came out in the 1920s, not just 1920, but 1920s. I should have put an S beside that. Um, and, and this is the count and kind of a, a, a ratio of this count to this count right here in terms of the bar graph. Not very pretty, but I just cobbled this together this morning to show kind of graphically how we could do this. And this is showing the genres across all movies and what their genre breakdown is here. Does that make sense, Kelly? No, it does. And um, yes, bucketize is in fact a word, or if it's not, like I've decided it is a word. Okay. Documentify and, and bucketize, we're on it. Um, so now we're going to do if we and, and this is very much like, you know, your favorite shopping systems that are, are, are more than likely powered by Lucene as well, is when you do a query, you also get the results back, the facets change. So in this case, and, and you can't really see the query itself very well, but in the title bar of this, this uh, uh, window here, it says movie facets cast Keanu Reeves. So I've done a query for cast Keanu Reeves, and we can go look at the code of that. And he didn't produce, he wasn't in any movies until the 1980s. So he only shows up in movies in this, this year ranges here. And he was in these different types of movies. 
um, out of those 27. So 16 of those were drama movies. Also fun to learn how many drama movies Keanu Reeves was in. Um, yeah, he's quite prolific. I like to use him as example because he just kind of, yeah, seems like a good, a good example. Very uh, much so. So yeah, that's, that is effectively the usability and showing kind of the end to end where me as a developer, I can go click, click, click in the UI or configure it through an API. We have configuration mm -hmm. API with Atlas search as well. And now you're enabled for search and now to plug it in and use it is pretty straightforward. So it took me just this morning to build this slide right here. So I didn't really pretty, pretty fy it. Um, I just wanted to, to show the data that was behind the scenes of what you see basically right here. So this is the data for Keanu Reeves, like literally 16 movies are drama and it's all in this JSON um, response structure right here. Right. And as a developer, all I had to do was do this and then come over here in my code and do this sort of thing. And then there is a little bit of code over here where I'm Sorry to go into code here, but you know, I'm looking at the meta element mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the facets and I'm getting the year facet and the genre facet and I'm looping through and it's a little bit of hard coded stuff where I'm looping through the years and then I loop through the genres and I draw a rectangle, right? So I draw the, uh, you know, which drama parentheses 10 or whatever it is. And then I draw a rectangle that is, you know, the ratio across the screen that looks like that. So. Um, pretty straightforward to go from data to kind of visualization that way. Yeah, very much. And I, I just foresee this as being extremely useful, especially for developers who are just learning how to like deal with search and incorporate that into their applications. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, it, the nice thing about Atlas Search is it making it quite easy. I don't want to you know, sugarcoat that too much. Like the ease is pretty cool and you can go pretty far with just some clicks, but let's not fool ourselves that we need to do a little bit of pondering about our configuration. So let me just show you mm -hmm. why that's kind of relevant and, and important here is behind the scenes is a configuration file that we can use with the, that gets generated from the visual editor where we just click, click, click and just accepted the, the defaults. This is the one I've customized a little bit. And rather than just doing naive, let's just tokenize our text as if white space is the separator and that's it. And we got a lowercase and, and that sort of thing where we're building an index of the words in our text. I want to be able to do things that are relevant to our particular language. So the plots of the movies are in our database are always in English. So what we do is we turn the, the English analyzer on on that one instead of the standard. The English one is actually a little bit smarter about English words in that it will stem them. So if you have, uh, for example, the word search and the word searching and searches, the stemmer in this English analyzer will turn all of those into the word search in the inverted index. So, and same logic applies, the same process applies when, uh, when a query is sent to that particular field, it will apply that same stemming. So if someone searches for searching, they still find words that say searches or searched or search. So uh, there is some very useful and necessary language capabilities there that you do kind of have to peel the covers off a little bit to to take advantage of these things. But the power is is really there for um, that kind of clever you know, searchability. Yeah, absolutely. So I know um, you probably could like run this demo for like an hour, but we are kind of getting close to time. Any other last pieces of this that you think people should actually see? Yeah. Uh, you, again, Kelly, thank you for the, <laughs> the great segues. To, so the one final thing that I wanted to kind of uh, demonstrate, and it, and it is one of the reasons that I would say makes Atlas Search a, a really compelling platform, is that um, we have this thing called query analytics. And first of all, and what I'm going to do is it doesn't really matter, but I have another slide here that's just going through some random strings of queries. And it's just doing it uh, as fast as you're seeing it go by here. And um, I'll let that run for a second. And then I'll just show you what that generates on the back end here. So if you come over here under the search section and then you go to your query analytics, 
you can get these query analytics where you can see graphs of the top terms that have been searched for. And you also get a graph and, and data about queries that get no results. And that's an important one because people searched at my application. And I, of course, these are all queries that I just generated. So, um, and, and some of these say what they are, but that's not really the query that's behind them because I was debugging my thing. But anyway, this particular query where it's matrix reloaded with a without a space in there, there's techniques that I can do in that more advanced configurations where I can make this be resilient to um, whether it's a space there or not a space there. Right now, it's necessary. It's, you know, it's relevant that there's a, a, a no space there and that makes it so it doesn't match anything so those are the types of things as a search engineer you have these challenges and this query analytics gives you the ability to see what are the top queries that are coming through and my thing was just generating queries very rapidly so i'm trying to generate some data to have some more interesting graphs here over time yeah and the thing i like about this part so talk talk about um the how to how to help users find what they need um you know in terms of how can you refine the way that you're you're kind of processing search so that so that if someone does not put the space in matrix reloaded, they can they can find their key entries. Yeah. And it, the thing is that that people implement search on their websites and they don't pay attention to those details. And as a search engineer, that this wasn't our pet query, so we never saw it. Our boss isn't che checking it, and uh, so these queries end up being users getting the not found. There's no documents found, and that's just you know horrifying if you're trying to sell stuff online. So people pay very close attention to these types of reports here. It's a really, you know, these are, there's a lot of dollars behind that one, right? It could be for a particular query. And if nobody's finding anything, we need to at least do our best <laughs> and show them something that's close to being related, either based off their persona or, you know, any demographics or, you know, all these other tricks that you'd play to show people stuff that they might want to click on. But, um, you know, for sure, we can do better with our actual lexical searches on this one. Yeah, absolutely. So one last call for anything else that we need to we need to show people in the demo. Um, and if not, I believe you have a couple of resources that people can check out. Yeah, let me just go to that because that yeah, thank you for doing the demo. That was that was really uh, thanks for the time to do that. Um, I had fun actually kind of building it and refining that um, over the last few days. So I mean, thank you. You did all the work. I just I just got to sit here and watch you watch you demonstrate, um, you know, some very cool stuff. Well, you just ask great questions and, and and actually just led the led the way. Um, so we have some resources here. We have a developer center. This is you know where I uh, am employed as, as a, a developer advocate is under this uh, slash developer at mongodb.com. And then we have MongoDB University um, uh, as well. And you know if you want to scan that barcode, uh, that QR code, it goes to this link right here, which is a short link that takes you to the Atlas Search homepage. Um, at the moment and allows you to you know kind of go from there and create a free account and just click right through so you can just kind of i will just show you here and you can just drive you know straight through um, and try free and next thing you know you're in a wizard where you're you know signing up but once you sign up and get a free account um, you can create your atlas uh, in you know any of the clouds that are out there you could upsize it when you need to go you know uh, more production with it but it gives the developer the chance to try this stuff out without you know without any credit card or anything like that so cool thank you eric for taking the time to to kind of you know show us mago db atlas search and then also leaving us with these these kind of great resources yeah my pleasure thank you so much kelly for having me on this uh on this uh what is how to